Good day, everybody, and I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. So today, we want to talk a little bit about unions, and unions, their growth, their origination, just a couple minutes, just a quick overview. First of all, why unions came into existence. They came into existence because the workplace was not conducive to employees. It's kind of as simple as that. Employees did not feel that they were treated fairly. And it, we could talk about pay and we could talk about working conditions, but in general, employees did not feel that they were treated fairly. So they wanted to have a voice in how they were treated in the workplace. True, management or ownership, leadership runs the business. Most workers do not have issues with that because some people, if you own the business, then you put your equity into it. You've devoted many years to it, so you should obtain most of the rewards. But they feel that there should be at least some kind of equity or fairness in the way that they're treated. Again, not just financially, but also have a, an input at least, not the final say, but an input on hours, working conditions, and certainly wages. So unions came into being over a hundred years ago to at least give a voice to employees. And that's a good thing. Employees should be involved in their business operations. In the most case, in most cases, they have the information necessary, whether it's with the customers or products, that fuels an organization's success. So they should have some input. So unions gave this input to employees, which was a good thing. Over the years, though, and we're talking 30 and 40 years ago, the cost to employ a person in a union has risen quite a bit. In some cases, it's 30% higher to employ a union worker versus a non-union worker. This has affected the the competitiveness of an organization because we in say for instance the United States may have to pay 30 percent more to employ a union worker but other countries don't have to pay that premium and so their products are cheaper and as a result when they export their products to the United States they're much cheaper and our products in the United States can't compete therefore we're at a cost disadvantage that's why over the last 30 years, union membership in the private sector has decreased considerably because it's too difficult to compete financially when our costs are higher and in other countries it's lower. So that means unions have to rethink their, the way they do business. You can't have that big of a cost disadvantage. Of course, it's great for people in the United States who are in unions to get paid more money but it's harder to compete. So how, so what is the role of unions today? Well, one of the roles that unions still can perform is that they can help ensure that their members are among the most knowledgeable, capable, have the greatest abilities. Because whether you're in a union or not, organizations want to pay for the best and the brightest workers. So I really think that unions have a great ability today to help on the workplace training of their employees, make them the most valuable, and money naturally accrues to people who are the most valuable in the workplace. That's one of the changes that I see unions can make. The second is to be much more collaborative with management. There's a great saying that says management gets the unions they deserve, unions get the management they deserve. So unions and management can work much more collaboratively to figure out a way that they can create, create a product or service that meets the needs of the, of the public, and that also includes the cost. So it's a different time for unions, but it's a different time for education, it's a different time for retail, it's a different time for the home ownerships and home buildings. So what we know about changes is coming much more rapidly than ever before. Once there is substantive change in a union, it can, or in an organization, in a, even in a union, another change is right after that. Years ago, change would occur and you'd have some time to recover from that. That doesn't happen anymore. Now change is repeated and it's constant. It's even iterative. So for that, unions have to change, management has to change, but I think that the best unions and the best managements can work collaboratively to create a product or service that can compete against some of the lower wage countries. A little bit about unions. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Anything else, let me know, but I always look forward to chatting with you and hope you enjoy it. Enjoy the rest of your day.